Hi everybody, welcome to Art on the Creek. My name is Anne and we are in my home studio in Parker, Colorado, and I couldn't be happier that you are here with me. Thank you for tuning in. Whether you're having a cup of coffee or you're gonna paint along, you're always welcome. Thank you so much for choosing this video. You know, I wanted to decide what to paint this week and I was kind of stuck. Sometimes I get stuck for ideas <laughs> and I was just kind of scrolling through Unsplash and I found the picture of a bullfrog, several frogs actually, that just had so much personality I couldn't resist. So today we're going to paint a bullfrog. Are you ready? Let's get to it. <music> Well, here we are. I've got everything we need. I will explain everything that I'm using as the video goes on, but first let's talk about our reference photo. There will be a link to this in the description. I just started laughing out loud when I saw this picture of this guy because he just looks like he needs to talk to the manager. I'd like to see the manager. I don't know. Maybe I'll name this guy John Wick. <laughs> he just looks like he's just had enough. Um, at any rate, I'm going to go through this part really quickly and uh, you can kind of see how I sketched him out here. If this does move too quickly for you, then perhaps you would like to consider a membership with my channel. Just like on Patreon, you can become a patron of Art on the Creek right here on YouTube. And the great benefit of it is, is right now I've got it on kind of a four week cycle where the first two weeks at the Pikes Peak level, that's the highest membership level, you will get a full length tutorial. And this frog is going to be one of them. It will be slow down real time and uh, you can pause the video, catch up, really look into detail. You can zoom in, do everything you need to do. Week three is going to be an early access review for all membership levels. And then week four will also be a tutorial for every member level. And all of those tutorials on my channel are full length. I will continue to make completely free videos here on YouTube. I'll continue to do reviews for the general platform, but um, if you really want something in more detail and you'd like some feedback and really want to grow as an artist and learn some new skills, my membership platform is a good place for you to do that. The paints that I'm using are A Gallo. They are honey-based watercolors made in Assisi, Italy. They're handmade, and this company, I'll put a link to everything in the description. A Gallo didn't pay me to do this video or anything. I'm just madly in love with these paints. And um, I will put a review, a link rather, up in the right-hand corner here, you can click on it, uh, to the review I did of this particular set. These are amazing, you guys. If you have not used these yet, I highly recommend them. Now, for anything like, like this where you have uh, reptiles that you're painting, or animals, or uh, portraits, anything like that, where you really want to soften some edges and do some color gradients, I recommend 100% cotton watercolor paper. I recommend 100% cotton watercolor paper actually for everyone, but um, for this in particular, for this frog, it really helped a lot. I was able to just lay the pigment down and then the, the I could do some wet on wet techniques, redistribute that pigment, soften the edges, not have any trouble at all with cauliflower blooms or back runs. And of course there's a lot more to that than just cotton watercolor paper, but I always recommend that to my beginning watercolor students to use cotton uh, because uh, it is easier to learn on than uh, wood pulp. Wood pulp paper, there's nothing wrong with it. It's great to use. It just has a bit of a higher learning curve, I think. So this particular cotton watercolor paper that I'm using is very approachable, very affordable. It's a size, uh, I wanna say B4, B, B5. It's seven inches by 10 inches, and I can't quite remember the B sizes <laughs> from my head, but I really like this. It's by Meaden, and if you've probably heard the rumors going around, I don't know if they're true, but uh, it is the same as Bao Hong paper. This is lovely, lovely paper. It has a texture very similar to Arches Cold Press. Um, and as I understand it, now they have come out with a hot press and this cold press, as well as a rough press. So if you're looking for different textures of watercolor paper, this one is extremely affordable and excellent to use. It's very, very easy. 
um, I've never had any trouble with it. And uh, as you can see with this frog here, the colors are just blending seamlessly and it really is just enough texture to get those granulating pigments to granulate. Something like this frog is a really excellent opportunity to play with your colors. Don't just use green, mix in browns, blues, any of those granulating pigments that you've saved up. This is the time to use them and they're really fun to play with on something like this. The brushes that I'm using are actually also from A Gallo. They are a Tintoretto mop brush or a quill brush. I've got a number two and a number zero and uh, I can't remember which one I've got in my hand there. That might be the zero. Well, whichever one it is, the other one is sitting there up in the upper right hand corner of the screen. But they come to such a fine hair point that I was able to do the detail of the eyes. When we get to that point, you can see I did not have to go to a smaller brush at all. These brushes, like I said, are by Tintoretto and they are their, their uh, Faux Kazan Squirrel. Um, beautiful, beautiful fibers. I love Imitation Squirrel. That is my favorite fiber of all time for uh, for painting with. And I just, I like the feedback I get from it. I like the amount of water they hold. I like the way that they hang on to the paint. Everything is so easy to use with this brush. And it also is really good at lifting too. Um, this paper is actually really cooperative with that as well. You can do a whole lot of techniques on here. You can use dry brush. You can use um, other media. Uh, you can definitely go in and lift off and uh, the paper will hold its integrity. It will hold masking fluid well. Um, it won't tear when you remove it, I mean. And um, it will also not tear when you remove the tape. So really, really a great, great paper to have and I highly recommend it. I think using cotton watercolor paper is really good advice for all artists, um, but particularly beginners. I think that uh, you really want to get off to a good start. Now, once you get the handle and uh, of what you're doing <laughs> and understand how the paints respond to different levels of water and understand how to best utilize whatever brush it is that you're using, then try the cellulose paper. Cellulose paper can be a lot of fun. You can get some really great techniques out of it. And every cotton paper is different. Every cellulose paper is different. By cellulose, I mean wood pulp. I mean whatever is not cotton. Anything like that. Any watercolor paper that you buy, um, you know, as with all things, it's going to be reflect, reflected uh, with the price point. Sometimes they'll size it only internally. Sometimes they will use sizing externally as well. And that will affect how it performs and what you can throw at it and what you can do to it. So play around, get whatever is within your budget and uh, decide what one is right for you. For me, this Mead and Watercolor pad works really great. And I like it because um, it's not so precious that I don't, uh, I don't feel guilty using a page. Um, I would recommend that you just use that page anyway because it is only paper when it comes down to it. But I know that that's, that's an issue for an awful lot of people. And I think when you don't have a lot of confidence as an artist in particular, in particular, uh, feeling like you're wasting something precious um, can be a little bit more intimidating. Um, and anything I can do to help you remove that barrier, well, then that's, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> so now we're working on the rocks and you'll notice I just went in with a really fine wash of uh, just some earth tone colors there. And now I'm putting that shadow in with some of this neutral tint. This neutral tint is really, really nice. You want to find one well, okay, you can use one that kind of pulls purple. This is what I was going to say to find one to avoid that. But just realize that that is a characteristic of that color. And then you'll have to use that uh, to your best advantage. But this particular neutral tint is, in fact, very neutral. A lot of them really focus on that PB19. And they can uh, really kind of pull purple, which is great. But in this case, it stays neutral enough with this particular brand that you can really mix it with all of the other colors in this palette and uh, take the colors down in value. And that's what a neutral tint should do for you. You can also use it concentrated enough um, and it will read black. Uh, so for instance, we'll use that on the eyes here. But you can see by tapping it in wet on wet up close against the frog, we can really get a nice shadow in there. And in that rock, I've also got some of the colors of the frog distributed. Whenever you're working with any kind of painting, you want to kind of repeat the colors in other locations. So for instance, the colors on the rock on the right, those are some of the colors that I've also dropped into the frog. Same as the one on the left. Even though that rock is primarily gray, the other colors that are dropped in there are repeated in that frog. So here's one reason why I really like using a brush that's versatile like this particular one. You want to look for a brush that's got a really good point on it because what that will enable you to do is to really get in there and do some detail, just like on this eye here. Notice how close I'm holding the brush next to the filaments. I've really choked up on that there on the ferrule and I'm holding it very close. 
That way I can really control what I'm doing with this brush and I can really get an awful lot of detail because this brush comes to such a fine point. So these are some things to remember and consider when you're shopping for your art supplies. Really look at your brush points and see if it's, uh, if it's one that's gonna work for you. And in fact, if you have a brush that's not too precious, you can actually do some trimming with uh, some good sharp scissors and kind of give it a haircut so that it performs the way that you want it to. We'll go ahead and add some more shadows under our frog here. Whenever we add shadows under something, it really helps it to come forward. Uh, so by putting shadows under the foot there, we're able to really establish that his foot is sitting right on top of that rock. And now we'll go in and do some of the background. And this blue is really special. The blue that I'm using is Yin Min Blue. This is the relatively new pigment that uh, is now available and A. Gallo has it. It is uh, PB86, I wanna say, I think that's right. And uh, it was discovered in 2009 um, at Oregon University, I think, either Oregon or Oregon State. But at any rate, it's a relatively new pigment on the market and it is beautiful. It really rivals ultramarine blue. I'm a huge advocate of ultramarine blue. And this one, everything you can do with ultramarine blue, you can do with Yin Min blue. It's just a little bit more delicate. It's not quite as warm as ultramarine blue, at least from my eyes. I'm not sure if that's, you know, 100% true as far as the, the grand scale of where warm and cool pigments fit. But to me, it looks ever so slightly cooler than uh, PB29, than an ultramarine. I'm just going in and adding the highlights and uh, doing some little bit of ink work here to get some shadows in. And those highlights I used a paint pen for. Um, the ink work I'm using a Micron brush pen and everything is just working out really well on this paper. And this is it, you guys, our frog is done. So once again, if you really would like to paint this frog more at a real-time pace, you can do that over on my membership panel. Just click on the Join button uh, under this video, and then you can learn all about the details of all three levels of membership. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate you, and I'm so glad you hung out with me for this little demonstration of a frog using a Gallo watercolors on Meaden cotton watercolor paper. Everybody take care. Have a wonderful week ahead, and we will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Thank you.